Hello, how you guys doing? James here. Well, I'm about to show you another relationship video. Let me get out. My mic not work too well. Let me get my mic here. Um, let's see if it pulls all the way over. Uh, yeah, this is about relationships between men and women. Uh, and a couple of good commentators I highly respect. And and they're going to give you the stats on men and women in their relationship. The first commentator, you know, shout out to Media Man. Uh, that's, a, that's on the bus page. But there's another couple of other ones I want to check out. The video I received from one of my female subscribers. And just simply ask the question, do you know who Clark is? I did not know who Clark is. <laughs> on TikTok that a lot of black women look up to. If I have a daughter and she's entering her preteen, teenage years, and she's starting to really be a sponge in this world in terms of who she's kind of modeling after outside of myself and family members, um, who she considers to be a role model or the it girl that she wants to be like, I hope that that list of people include Clark. She's very young. I think she's 24 years old. But a lot of black women, both young and old, consider this woman the model black woman that they would want to be, or they're aspiring to be, so to speak. And I, I you know, once I got this video sent to me, I went down a rabbit hole and I watched a couple of her videos. And of course, she has the same. I don't, you know. So there was a couple people that was saying she only dates white men. But then the black women in the comment section, they were saying she only dates men who fit her standards. So basically what they're saying is only white men fit her high standards. So uh, you know, I want to be very clear on that because I know black women like to give pushback. We just go and wear who we find, you know, fit our, you know, standards and preferences and things of that nature. So yes, her dating, I uh, guess history online has been with all white men so one would assume that she only dates white men but black women who necessarily don't like black men they like to mask that by saying well she only dates who fit her who fits her requirements okay so yeah, i'm gonna use it but it's kind of bs i get it <laughs> but yeah so it is what it is but this is the young lady clark explaining social class <laughs> that pertains to her. So here we go. Tell me what my thoughts were on dating outside of my social class, and I answered that I would quite literally never do that, and here's why. And for the purpose of this question, I took social class to sort of mean like socioeconomic class, so my economic status, maybe around how much money I make, the social status, like perhaps the caliber of school that I went to and the space that I found myself in as a result and the people I found myself surrounded by. And then also like the lifestyle I've created for myself that's a combination of like the economic status and the school and the spaces and all of that. I think you guys get how that fits together. Right there, she was just somewhat qualifying herself as to why she will never date outside of her social class that she actually curated for herself. What she's describing is social mobility. To summarize what social mobility means, it's doing better than your parents. At my age, am I doing better than my parents? You come from meek beginnings, but then once you get older and you start making your own way, you start making a significant amount of money where you start to jump social classes from where you were to where you're at now so that's her qualifying herself as to why she got to this resolution and why she won't date outside of her newfound social class it's important to note that i did not grow up with a lot of money my father went to prison when i was four years old during that time and all the time after like my mom has been a public school teacher so they don't make a lot of money when we first moved to atlanta we lived in a two-bedroom apartment with seven people sharing one bathroom like i literally shared my second oldest brother and then my oldest brother and my sister-in-law were on the top bunk of that bed okay we were not a jack and jill family okay money was not 
we didn't have a lot of it. So knowing my circumstances, when I was like 12 years old, I made this vision board for myself. My mom actually found recently in her storage unit. I had basically carved out my entire life, like what I was going to do in high school to make sure I could get into an Ivy League college, and what I was going to do with that college to make sure I could get into a certain law school or buy a certain car and have a certain apartment or home, like all of these things I had planned out. And I knew that because my family didn't have the same financial resources someone else's did or access to certain people to get me into doors, I had to open Open them myself. He's actually explaining a lot of people's story, a lot of black folks' story. She's actually describing mine outside of being very intentional. I was not very intentional in regards to how I, you know, started to jump social classes. She seems a little bit more uh, organized than I was as a young man, and you know, just me joining the military. Things happen like that, you know, from progression year to year. You start improving here, start improving there. But yeah, but shout out to her for being very intentional by the age of 12 years old, creating that vision board and basically outlining what she was going to do and or be when she becomes a young adult or a young woman. Fast forward to her being 24. This is where she had, she's at now. So this will be clear. There's nothing wrong with what she's saying. <laughs> I, you know, I mean, I think her as a young woman, she should have any type of standard that she wants. It's not my you know, job to tear her down for whatever she said or you know her preferences are that's perfectly fine but i'm going to tell you the issue here in a second but i want to let her continue so here we go so knowing that understanding how much work i put into the person that i wanted to be in the life i wanted to have feels so unfair to me now and also to my younger self who was just so forward thinking and like put so many things on the back burner to prioritize the life that I would have right now. For me to date someone who cannot give me the life that I've always wanted, like they can't match it. I don't even need you to give it to me because I've already gotten it for myself, but if you can't be right there with me, it's not fair to me to lower my standards or accept certain things that I knew I never wanted to, which is why I work so hard on myself, just so that I can be with you. It is not lost on me the fact that a lot of guys my age are just not going to have what I have because I'm in a very unique position to make an insane amount of money for someone my age. And that's where the other part of the socioeconomic status comes in. I need to at least see that you have worked as hard as I have to put yourself into certain spaces to open up certain doors for yourself to go to certain schools or whatever it is because you have this intrinsic ambition and drive because you know that you also have your eyes set on the sort of lifestyle that I do and that is what you're actively working towards every day not not having that does not make you a bum it doesn't make you undesirable it doesn't make you an unattractive man or anything it just makes you incompatible with me and the lifestyle that I want to have so if I'm really considering like seriously seriously dating someone not just like a casual date whatever this is something that is a requirement for me it's not like a, oh i hope or maybe i will i've tried it before i'm not doing it this is what i require and i don't think it's a lot to ask she wants to practice hypergamy dating at or her income level and that's you know her prerogative to do whatever that is you know what i'm saying so she's saying that i you know i know that there is a small percentage of men that are in you know that are making as much as I do at my age, and she's absolutely right. So her standard is her standard. I didn't understand the pushback that a lot of people were giving this young lady because you yourself should have certain standards, and she has every right to list off everything and what she did to get to this point, so on and so forth. Now, <laughs> this is where the problem comes in. For this young woman, she can have those standards. She's making an insane amount of money from what she says, has an education. She looks like she's in shape in her videos. So yeah, she can have any standard that she wants, no matter if it's driven by income and money. I know some guys may look at that and be like, oh man, that's crazy. You don't, you don't think about love? No, she ain't worried about that. You need to meet the income requirement and then we can move forward. So basically all that means is that there are some guys that just don't qualify to date that particular woman. So it's no need to get mad, guys. Just let her have her standards and move forward. Yeah. Don't get in this woman's comment section. And I, did, I guess it was, you know, the common narrative. There were black women saying that there were a lot of black men making videos talking about her. They were saying that every time a black woman decides to raise their standards, black men have a problem with that. No. You want me to show you what black men have a problem with? What you do for a living, boo? I work. 
What do you do? I work for a nail salon. Okay, you work for a nail salon. You have any kids? No. No kids. Do you believe in zodiac signs? No. Okay. So we got London, North Carolina, 24. She works. No kid. What kind of man are you looking for, girl? Tall man and dreadheaded. Tall man and dreadheaded. Okay. You gotta be tall. Um, should he look a certain way? Well, you said tall and dreadhead, correct? Yes. So if he didn't have dreads, you wouldn't want them? You wouldn't want them? No. How tall does he have to be? Um, six foot. Have you ever dated a man that was tall with dreads? No. I'm glad Kendra G asked that question. The issue that a lot of black men have with black women when we're having these preference discussions or your standards is because most of you guys don't meet them. Most of you guys have never been around these types of guys. You've never dated these types of guys. So that's why you probably will see a lot of black men saying, man, that's crazy. Your standards are too high. Mm -hmm. I don't condone it, but I do understand why. Because in a sense, it's literally black men trying to help you guys understand that either this man is rare or you probably never dated this guy, but you've been on social media and you've seen women ask for certain, you know, outlandish things. So you're like, well, she's not better than me. So I want the same thing as this woman. And that's where you got to, you know, I kind of hold the ladies accountable because you guys perpetuate this narrative because you guys don't talk to these women and explain outside of Kendra G out of all people. She tried to explain to this woman. So that's, and I'm talking specifically to the black women. That's the issue that black men have. It's not for the fact that black men don't want you to raise your standards. It's the fact that you're making yourselves undateable because you may not ever find that man. When there are suitable black men who may be on your quote unquote level that you're going to overlook because you're looking for this one of one fictitious man. Exactly. So hopefully for the black women who are ninja watching, I want to be clear. Black men are not mad at you raising your standards for the women that actually qualify. Mm -hmm. It's for the fact that all black women are raising their standards when they don't meet the requirements. Because if you haven't found that man, then that is the market telling you something. Maybe you need to do some internal work and think about all these standards and preferences that you have, and you may need to reel it back in if you're actually looking for love or somebody to settle down with, someone to marry. Because if you keep leading with money, people are gonna start looking at you like, hey, let me see if you qualify. Exactly. Okay, especially guys, in these spaces. Exactly. So that's where the problem is. It's right. not, you have your standards. But I think black men are just trying to, I, dare I say, partner with y'all. <laughs> if you have some realistic expectations. But they're not able to do that if your standards don't match the woman that you are. Right. Your social class, your social economic class. Right. Hopefully that makes sense, lady. We're not done. She's not done. <laughs> Ever walk down a street and felt a twinge of fear? In a world where danger can be anywhere, how do you ensure... We're not done. She's not done. And you will only date that man that's tall with dreads? Yeah. Hypothetical question. Let's say a man that's tall with dreads doesn't want to date you back. You're okay with never dating another man? Yeah. Again, Kendra G, shout out to her for asking it. She says she okay. If the guy that she just described doesn't approach her, she's okay with not having any man at all. So she's standing on business, as the kids say, right? <laughs> Let's continue. I'm okay with it. Oh, okay, so, be tall, at least how much? Six foot. Six foot and have dreads. Those yes. are, that's non-negotiable. Yes. And if you are not tall, and if you aren't, if no man comes forward that is over six foot and has dreads and wants to date her back, she is okay with never dating again. Yes. Why? Because that's how I am. So you will go your whole life never having a relationship with another man all because he's not over six feet and has dreads? Yes. yes. Should he make a certain amount of money? Uh, yes. How much? A million. A million. A million. A million. A million. A million. A million.
You heard it right. She said the man has to make at least a million dollars. That's the problem, ladies. This woman considers herself on the same quote unquote level as the young woman Clark. Not just her, millions of women do the same thing. And this is not necessarily about her, I'm just using it as an avatar. God bless her. You know, because she seems a little bit delayed. So, you know, don't go too hard on her. But she just said that a man who's over six feet with dreads needs to make a million dollars. That's the problem. Do you understand now, ladies? So I heard you correctly. He has to be over six feet, have dreads, and make a million dollars. Yes. And that's the only thing. I'm all about that money. She said, I'm all about that money. She had, she dead serious. Okay, look at her face. She serious as a heart attack. Let's continue. Oh. Get what I'm saying. Get what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, this is the dreads. That's the one million right there. It says one million. <laughs> Kendra, she, she wow for that. But she was just basically, I'm going to draw this man for you. There he is. Now, do you understand, ladies? And I'm not done driving home this point because I need y'all to understand this. Black men are not mad at you having your own internal, personal preferences. Mm-mm. It's the fact that they are trying to partner with you guys because black men typically marry black women. But we're, they're not able to do that if you guys have these unrealistic expectations. Exactly. And this video right here. Exactly. There's probably going to be a woman in my comments saying, you can't tell her what she deserves. I'm not. I'm just using it as an example. I'm yeah. praying that more black women will start speaking to women like this and helping, you know, help her understand that, hey, if you really want to get married, maybe you need to reevaluate your situation. That is not my job. Because there was far too far too many women saying black women never settle, never settle. Y'all need to be having these conversations amongst yourselves. Mm-hmm. And this is not just a partner with black men. Because for some odd reason, the narrative is that you guys could just hop, skip, and a jump to white men. Not understanding how statistics work. People about eighty to eighty five percent of racial pairs are, you know, with each other. White men select black women for marriage at the lowest rate. White women first. It's uh, Asian and Hispanic, you know, second and third, and then black women at 0.5%. Currently, there is 0.5% white men married to black women. So this argument of, well, if we can't find a black man that meets our requirements, then I'm just going to go ahead and date a white man. Y'all got to have these conversations from a logical standpoint. Right. And again, like I said, as white men, because they've been very vocal at all this free, you know, promotion that black women have been giving them. You guys can go read the Dating Divide book. So again, it's not my job to tell you, hey man, white men, you know, they don't marry black women, you know, like that. So you should just start to partner. No, man, you can have your hopes, wishes, dreams, whatever. But see, you know, see if you can, you know, do it. See if white men will accept you if that's what you think the fix is. But again, like I said, I'm not done uh, you know, driving home this point. Let me show you guys something. And shouts out to Kendra G for kind of, you know, keeping a level head and trying to explain to her. But she also did something else on her TikTok page. Let me show you. Hold on. Since y'all think that, you know, it is just her that thinks like this. I just did a quick search on Kendra G's TikTok page. Let me show you what I found. Look at the headlines. Mom of five wants a man similar to 50 Cent must make at least $200,000. She's a millionaire. Make at least 300K, no sex until marriage. 53 and looks amazing. One million to date her. She will settle for 550,000. 
you know, shouts out to her for saying that she will settle for five hundred and fifty thousand dollars. She's seventy years old, have a seven hundred credit score, be over six feet, have fifty to a hundred thousand dollars. Seventy years old and still having the same requirements as a twenty year old black woman. Mom to five, make at least two hundred and fifty thousand dollars net worth one million she's the ceo of her own consulting company make at least one million i think i got no i just knew make at least one million prefers a man that's six one make at least 150 150 thousand last man she dated made three million so now it's dated not married dated so now that is her level what is that term that uh, I think Roland Tomasi uses? Alpha widow? So if a woman gets with a guy and he's rich and he provides for her and he's got a house and he's got this kind of car, she wants the next boyfriend that she has that's not that guy has to provide the minimum has to be that. That sets the benchmark for the next guy. This is what tends to happen when guys make a significant amount of money and these women use these examples as a way to qualify themselves for dating that type of man. She was able to have sex with them but she wasn't able to keep him, which is what matters the most, ladies, okay? She lied about her age, done with broke men, make at least 250K, okay? You must make at least 400,000 to marry her. She says she knows her worth. Divorce mom to four, be able to afford the life she lives. Minimum 150,000 says black women have woken up she's 51 and fine be financially stable make more than 150,000 mom to two have a passport and make 200k if you make 100k you have to be able to grow more so I mean who does her for saying she'd give some wiggle room if you only make a hundred thousand dollars a year okay y'all understand now and then like I said black women I'm specifically talking to y'all. This is where the problem lies. Every black woman, no matter from 70 years old to Clark's age, 24 years old, they all have the same requirements. That is not going to get y'all married at a higher rate. Not just with black men, but with all men. If you think that the grass is greener on the white side, so to speak, you're sadly mistaken. Black men marry y'all the most. White men marry y'all the least. You can try. Open up your pool. I'm encouraging you to do it. And see what they say. Now I want to refresh our memory with this Tyler Perry clip. Especially black women. And I might get in trouble for saying this. But I will. In the in, in our society right now, black women are making a lot more money for the most part than yeah. black men. Right? So, and that's where he was wrong. He put out this narrative that black women, black women are making a lot more money than black men. Y'all just heard that it's not true. And that's a common narrative that's been pushed around in the black community for so long. And I told you guys, that is one of the main reasons why black women think black men are less than. If, if you are under the impression that the people that you're supposed to partner with make less than you, less educated, own less businesses, always in jail are either gay you know broke then you have every right to think that those people are less than that's what the black community does with these conversations and these false narratives so that's why a significant amount the majority of black women think that black men are less than because the black community keeps pushing these false narratives make friends at fun aarp events today stay tuned Hello, my friends, and welcome, welcome back to another session with the older man. Yes, it's another lesson I'm going to be bringing you guys on men. Men, I'm talking to you today because we are in a crisis. And let me explain what I'm talking about. Listen, I've been having a lot of very private conversations with men. We're going through a hard time. And one of the biggest problems that I'm, I'm coming across is that 
men who are feeling like they are disposable, useless. And I started to look into this. I, I was doing it for about a month because, you know, I really wanted to try to understand why is it that men are really feeling like, you know what, I just feel disposable. And that's what we're going to be focusing on today. Men who feel like they're just useless, disposable, they don't have any purpose. So I'm going to call this segment the disposable man. And I want to address it simply from this perspective. Throughout history, we as men have always had a purpose. Protect and provide. Whether it's for a family or our country, village, it doesn't matter. We always had this role of protection and providing. That was it. Our women were there to raise our kids and our job was to make sure that they were good. But as this role has been diminished by technology, by the feminist movement, that women should be equal like men etc etc and women are not making more money well what is your real purpose what is it society is saying hey we got to look at equality you know you and women are equal but we know for a fact that women don't want equality they either want superiority or they want you to actually maintain your traditional rule but they don't want to be traditional so what do we do so this is what i want to get into today is hopefully i can shed some light for you guys and help you out, try to get you to focus on some other ideas, another way of looking at life. Because you cannot think that you're going to survive in a modern environment while thinking traditionally. And one of the things that I see on this channel, a lot of you guys are still quoting the Bible and still going into the whole religious aspect of relationship. And that's fine. That's great. And you guys know I'm not religious. But that doesn't mean that I don't see some of the great things that religion offers a society. And one of the great things that I do see is that marriage, the traditional way of looking at marriage, where, you know, the man leads the house, the woman takes care of the kids. I still see that as the best way that we as a society can survive. Because I can tell you, Ever since we have changed into this new form, it's not working. Birth rates are down. More women, more men are unhappy as it is. So the shit ain't working. It is not working. We have fixed something. We have changed something. And it's not working. I honestly feel that in order for the society to actually survive before it's too late, there's going to be a massive reversal. But I'll be gone before that happens. So guys, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Log in to askanolderman.com. Book a session with me if you're having issues, whether it's in your marriage, whether it's your social media channel, whether you want help on anything in life. I'm here for you guys, okay? Askanolderman.com. So I'm going to now look at some of the problems that we're currently having in today's dating market and today's relationship market. Because once you identify a problem, then you're more capable of dealing with or coming up with solutions. All right, so that's how we're gonna approach this. First, I want you to look at today's dating culture. We men, we always feel that, and I took some notes down here, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna be referring back to my notepad here. If I can get the light to actually stop reflecting off the bloody thing. The first and most important is the dating culture. I mean, everything has to start from a date, right? You meet a person, you meet a woman, something has to happen in order for you guys to realize, hey, let's pursue each other, let's look at giving each other a chance. In today's dating culture, women are still looking for men to be chivalrous. Women still want men to do all the nice things, make the initial move. She wants him to pay for the first date. She want him to still show her that he could provide for her. Her money isn't spent on him. My, anybody trying to date me, my bills are your bills. Care of whose car it is. You're trying to date me. You're trying to take a load off of me. So my car is your car with the bills. I don't simple. You're trying to date me, so my bills are your bills. And, and listen, we've seen so many videos like this. I feel like I sound like a broken record, but we know how this works, gentlemen. She wants you to do all the things that benefits her, not really wanting to reciprocate. And your ability or your way of showing her that you are going to be a worthwhile mate is how much money you spend on her. So this is pretty much killing the dating market because men are saying, yeah, but these women are taking advantage of that because we now have the foodie culture. We now have the dating culture where women just get bored. So men just feel like they're being used. She 
she agrees to go out with a food date. Yes, she agrees to go on a trip. Yes, she agrees to go on all of these nice activities. And then she goes to, she cuts him off because she knows that she got other guys waiting in the wings for her, especially if she's young. The biggest companies in the world are willing to pay big bucks for anyone who's able to code. And you may... She's young. Do girls have rosters? 100%. <laughs> how, how does the girl roster work? The one guy... They, girls always have one guy that they're like, if he asked me to be his girlfriend, for sure. And then they've got like a couple other ones that, yeah, like they're fun. Like, oh yeah, he's really fun. Like, we have a lot of fun. So it's like one or two that they have really fun, a fun time with. And then they've got... Probably two or three, because or, 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 depends on how pretty the girl is, that they just use. They use for drinks, they use for dinner, they use for trips, and so, so girls have probably about four or five guys on their phone that they make them think that, like, they're the only one. I also admit it to having rosters was there a, a point where you were like that? So when I started talking to my now boyfriend, I was talking to another guy. And he, like, I didn't want anything serious with him. I just liked the attention. I liked the dinner dates. I liked just hanging out with him. And so he was just like, just somebody to hang out with. So men feel like, hey, my value as a man isn't recognized. So for those men tend to just stay out of the dating market. So ladies, this is one of the first ways that men feel like they're disposable. Then we come to social media. We have these platforms like Instagram and TikTok where women can just market themselves, display their bodies all over the internet. And unless you're in the top seven, eight, nine, or 10 of men in looks, in height, in status, where you can show that you're blinging, that you have it, Together. you're not going to get any attention at all. Men are giving up on dating. And one of the reasons why is because of women's expectations. One of the main reasons why women have such unrealistic expectations is because of social media. And let me tell you why. So women are often fueled by what they see on social media. It seems like everywhere you look online, there are images of perfect couples, luxury, exotic vacation, lavish gifts. And this is very, very toxic because this is not even real. It's just social media. And these things create an unrealistic standard for women because they expect that from a partner. And men feel like they need to be wealthy or constantly shower women with gifts to be able to measure up. And it's a lot of pressure. It can leave men thinking that they'll never be able to meet these expectations. And as a result, men are just giving up on dating because they feel like they can compete um, against those fantasy relationships that we see online. And I think it's very, very dangerous because it can lead to self-esteem issues as men feel like they're never going to be good enough. And this can result in anxiety, depression. So yeah, it's a very, very concerning problem. So those average men, who don't have that, they just feel disposable. They feel like, ah, oh, I don't have any chance at all. Because any average woman these days can just go online and put on a bikini, regardless of how fat she is, how freaking slim she is, what kind of tattoos, what nose ring, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous what women can get away with online right. and still get attention from men. Right. And because of the simp culture, right. it's unreal. So right. men don't get any love. Right on social media, but women have an endless stream of it. You know, back True. when I was dating, tw just 20 years ago, I didn't have those options. I didn't have those options to women because women weren't doing this. I had the women who were in my backyard, who were in my town, in my in my country. In a country like the Cayman Islands, it's very, very slim pickings. But it made me focus. It, it allows someone to focus. Hey, I see potential in this person. I'm going to date them and I'm going to give them a chance, and it gets me to focus, and it got my wife to focus on me. So what this did was, it made people realize the importance of a one person and get along with that person. 
because the illusion of choice that social media provides is a dangerous, dangerous problem. Right. But it does make men feel like they are disposable. Yes, and then right. you have the inconsistent standards. This is the point where men just feel that it's up to them to just constantly give. And if they're not giving, right. whether it's in the dating process or whether it's in the relationship, if right. he's not the one that has to make adjustments to please the woman, then he's not worthy. Why do women give up or, or become distant with a guy when he struggles financially? I was married a few years back and everything was going really well. The relationship was awesome and then I ended up losing my job. Money wasn't coming in as steadily as before. She was distancing herself uh, from me. I took it very seriously as far as getting through the good times and the bad and obviously she didn't, she left. That's another thing that men have to deal with constantly. Women right. don't realize this because right. the whole system is rigged to favor her. So this inconsistency makes men feel like he's not important at all. He just feels disposable. So we have to look at this as a society and realize that if you're going to treat men like that, you're going to have a serious problem with men actually taking women serious. So if a man is measured by only what he can give, and not based on who he is as a, as a full-on human being, then of course that man is gonna feel like he's, he's nothing. And you know, you ladies don't realize this until it happens to your sons, or to your father, or to your brother, because you can't empathize with any other man if you're not close to him. And I'm not talking about the man that you're in love with, because society have told you that you have to get what you can from that man. If you see your little brother being abused by his wife or his girlfriend, you will call it out. So this inconsistency is a huge thing. Now the legal and the financial aspects of feeling disposable, this plays out in the courts. Whether it's child support, during divorce, alimony, this is where men feel it the most. Divorce favors women. That's it. Simple as that. So most men just don't want to even venture into marriages these days. Because when divorces occur, this is when he feels most vulnerable. This is when he feels like, wow, I am disposable. Tyrese, Tyrese right now, he's fighting this bloody fixing of a wife that he had a prenup with for Christ's sake. It wasn't a very tight prenup and he's paying for it right now in court. Tyrese Gibson has been arrested for failing to pay the required child support to his ex-wife, Samantha Lee. The court had ordered him to pay $10,690 per month for their daughter, Soraya, but he had only been paying around $2,200 per month, which was much less than what the court required. During a hearing on September 9th, the judge found him in contempt of court and he was taken into custody. To avoid jail time, he was given the option to pay $73,000. But she wants, what, $20,000 for a five-year-old kid in child support? Yeah, make that shit make sense. But that's what the law says that she can get. That's insane. So the laws are not in men's favor. So men are just saying, ah, I'm not going to play the game. Not going to do it. Now, let's look at workplace pressure or societal pressures in the workplace. When a man is in the workplace, he's expected to perform at a height that is unbelievable. Women don't even have to perform that well in order for her to be pushed ahead of men. But a man, in order for him to stay on top, he has to work exceptionally hard. He has to go above and beyond. But hey, if a woman puts in enough, she can be easily promoted because they're really trying to push this whole equality BS. If a man shows any emotion, any frustration in the workplace, he could easily be dismissed. But if a woman shows any signs from stress or anything else, hey, she's a woman. It's still there. It's a problem. A man will easily get fired much faster than a woman will. Yeah. Here are three signs that you're being discriminated against at work. Hi, my name is Doug Lipsky. I'm an employment attorney. One sign you're being discriminated against is if your employer is setting different performance standards for employees doing the same job, and the unifying factor for the employees that are not being measured as high as the others is their protected status. For example, their age, race, national origin, sexual identification, something like that, while the other group is being held to a higher standard. The second sign you might be discriminated against at work is if your employer is unevenly disciplining employees for doing the same thing. For example, if there's a group of employees who always show up late, um, that always get disciplined for it, and there's another group that always show up late, but is not getting disciplined, you look for the unifying factors of them. 
Do they all share a protected status, their age, race, national origin? If the group that is getting disciplined shares the same protected status, the employer is most likely discriminated against them because of that protected status. A third sign of discrimination at work are the trends in who is the employer hiring, firing, disciplining, promoting, giving salary increases. If you're seeing that employees are performing at the same level, but one group is getting promotions and the salary increases, but the other group is not, and this group shares a particular protected status, that group is probably getting discriminated against while the other groups are getting the promotions and salary increases. Same thing with the firing. If a group of a certain protected status is the group that keeps getting targeted for the firing and when they're performing at the same level as everyone else, it's usually another sign of discrimination at work. And lo and behold, let's not talk about the SA and the, any of the problems that a man can create in the workplace for a woman that he could easily be accused of. Man can't even look at a woman or say anything anymore. Most men are just quiet in the workplace, stick to their other men instead of talking to women. So how do you think a man feels? Yeah, disposable. And let's not talk about the media. Media and entertainment. The man is portrayed either as incompetent, docile, buffoon, Gone are the days now where they're portraying men as the as the masculine macho man anymore. And even if they do give him that role, they show that masculine macho man screwed up a lot. And who is he rescued by? Woman. It's always a woman who comes in and rescue him. It's insane. Partly the woman has enough brain to come in and rescue him when he screws up from being too macho or too strong or too aggressive. That's how movies are portraying men nowadays. Netflix is the worst. It always portrays the hero still as the man, but for some reason, the sidekick is always rescuing the hero constantly. And the sidekick, the woman, she then in the end always, always portrayed as the ultimate hero, the savior, the angel. So the message in a man's head is, hey, I'm not really that necessary. And of course, we have to look at men who are disposable in dangerous situations, war, dangerous jobs. Yet, the man still has to stay in the country, in the Ukraine, women and children, they have to go, old men who don't have any use, yet. On the battlefields of the East, Ukraine tries to repel the Russians. But on the western frontier, it's engaged in a different sort of war. Here, the authorities are trying to stop their citizens from getting out. They're needed in the army. It's short of recruits. But there are thousands of Ukrainians, like these men caught near the border with Romania, who do not want to fight. We make contact with a man preparing to flee through the mountains of western Ukraine. He calls himself Ivan and says he can't wait any longer. I'm not being disloyal. Everyone understands this. Many of my friends have already gone. Anyone who has their opportunity is leaving. They can go. I have a Ukrainian friend here in Dubai. He's 55 years old. They want him to come back home to fight in the war. This man don't even know how to let him pick up a knife. <laughs> but the point is, is that this is the problem that we have. Men are disposable when it comes to defending the country. I want to show you something right quick. But it's a solution to this. But it's another story. What's going on, y'all? I'm out here on a Tuesday with DJ Pete, and this beach is looking good. My man DJ Pete just ran up on two baddies, by the way, which that's a subject for another video. It's pretty much wide open out here in Ipanema. So we on the beach. It's a Tuesday. I got my Capri Vodka right here, and I was sitting here having a conversation with DJ, and I'm like, yo, ever since I have been posting the yacht party that I've been going to, the pictures and videos and the Instagram reels. On Facebook and Instagram, a lot of girls 
that I have been going to, that I went to high school with, that I was in the military with, they have unfollowed me, they have unmatched me, and they have unsubscribed to me. And these are chicks that I've been knowing for 20 years. We went to high school together. We, we, were, we, was, we was in the military together. Hey, I, we used to, you know, we had a good rapport. But they don't like it. And the reason why they don't like it is because they don't want to see me having a good time with some beautiful, young women in Brazil. Because according to them, I should be with somebody their age. Because I, I, you guys know I'm 39 years old. Retired U.S. Air Force. I served 20 years in the Air Force honorably, by the way. All right? I got multiple streams of income, the whole shebang. So, according to them, I should be just like... I should be just like looking for a girl their age, 39, 40, washed up. Some of them still are pretty, but they're just on the tail end. They sick, DJ. What you think? Well, I think the problem is multifold. Hold on, hold on. You think the problem is multifold? Here, take the microphone. There's multiple sides to this, 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 this problem. A lot of women... They like orbiters. Okay. They like orbiters. They like dudes who they had no intention of getting with, no intention of of connecting with, but they enjoy the fact that you desire them. Okay. They enjoy that. So <laughs> when you are seen with women who are better looking than them, they got a problem with it. A lot of women in America, particularly. They have an issue with men who have sexual choice. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get into why, but it's just that's just how it is. So if you're a man who has sexual choice, they seem to have an issue with that. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I think it boils down to that. They like the orbiters. They don't want to get with none of their orbiters. They don't have, they have zero respect for their orbiters. Zero, one. zero intention. Zero respect. Do you want to successfully date women abroad? Keep in mind now, I live in Brazil and I've been living overseas 14 years. Do you also want to discover all of the top tier travel hacks from a pro? You get all my knowledge and build wealth through stocks, bonds, mutual funds, crypto. I have all of that information in this travel system. Check it out. Check the link in the description box for more info. Hey there, real quick. I'm Steve Fisher, and I'm here to tell you about a great event from the U.S. Concealed Carry Association. But they like the fact that you can, you know, boost their ego a little bit. And when you show them, like, hey, I got girls that are better looking than you with half your attitude. Yeah. Tell the, they, tell, they feel, huh? tell the story about your, the, 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 the eighth grade joint that you were telling me about. The what? Eighth, you, the chick you've been knowing since the eighth grade? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Break break that down because that, so, uh, that, that falls in line with what you're talking about. So I I got a uh, uh, oh associate. She's not really a friend, but I've known her since eighth grade, mm -hmm. and uh, we've we're friends on Facebook or whatever. And recently she asked me, "So are you passport growing again?" <laughs> and how old is she? She's my age. I'm 46. Bitter. She's my age. She's married. She got kids. Whatever. Why does she care? Good question. <laughs> she asked me, "Are you passport boring again?" And I said, "No, that's for the you know, that's for the you know. I'm not. A, I don't. I don't consider myself a passport bro. I'm a. I consider myself a, pa a black man who travels because you know I've been doing this before the term even came into existence. So you know, one day she said, you know, hit me back when you get back in town. So I hit her back when I get back in town, which is Chicago. She doesn't respond until three months later. I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> just looking for attention. Basically, yeah. Basically, yeah. But you know what? It don't matter because my life is here. I don't think about what goes back what goes on back in the United States. It's not a part of my reality anymore. I don't complain about what goes on there. I'm more focused on my life here and you know, whatever goes on here. So it is what it is. Look at look at the look look around, man. Look at this. This is a Tuesday. This is a Tuesday, y'all. Tuesday. It's a fucking Tuesday. Tuesday, right? It's a Tuesday. 
Okay. Hey, sweetheart. You want to come over here? Yeah, she'll come over. <laughs> Tag team. All right. Yeah. All right. Let me get back. All right. I want to piggy. I want to piggyback off of what you said. A lot of these girls are looking for orbiters. I'm gonna mention one particular girl that I that unmatched me and unfollowed me on the off of uh, social media. So this is a chick that I've been on for 20 years. Uh, at some point, I had a huge crush on her huge crush before I moved overseas I was always texting her every day uh, good morning text and when can we hang out and uh, you know all of these different things like I kept trying I kept trying I kept trying and we were she would give me attention over the f but when it came to actually meeting it never happened now this is before I was uh you know, indoctrinated into the, the true nature of women. I didn't really understand completely. So, uh, I was giving her a, way too much attention. Okay? Now, this, so these individuals like her, they go out and they get education. They go out and get these degrees. They got, they, they fell for the, for the, uh, for the indoctrination. You're going to go out, you're going to get educated, which she did. She got educated. And then you're going to get a good job, which she did. You're going to get your own car, you're going to get your own house, which she did. Okay? So now she's laid up in this house, 3940, on a downward slope, looks-wise, and now nobody's checking for her no more. The, 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 uh, the, now she also, this is one thing that... This is the, the wake-up call that these women get. I'm going to let you talk in a second. The wake-up call they get is they realize, like at my age, they realize that they still got to work for 20-plus years. You're 39, you're going to be working until you're 59, 63. So they're looking at my life, they're looking at what's going on with me, and they see me uh, chilling on the beach, and they're like, well, wait a minute. Don't you got an extra 20 years to work? Or how can you live in Brazil? Or why you got all these young girls around you? You know what I'm saying? That's what they. That's what they. That's the internal, uh, the, the internal voices in their head. Like, why is he doing this? He should be miserable like me in the United States. It's dangerous in Brazil. You know what I'm saying? They say they say stuff like it's dangerous over there. Why? Why he's in Brazil? Don't they got? Isn't Brazil a favela? One big favela? Just stupid. They be thinking like that. You know what I'm saying? That's that's what they be thinking. But go ahead, DJ. Yeah. So, well, I wanted to say that you know, a lot of women in America they need to understand. And I don't speak this from a place of, of bitterness. I just don't. A lot of women need to understand in America that your academic and professional credentials mean nothing if you are a pain in the ass to deal with. Okay? It means nothing even if you are amazing to deal with. It's like a net. It's a net negative. It doesn't. It is. It's, a, it's neutral. I don't care. I will go for the cashier at McDonald's than to deal with a so-called boss bitch who you can't tell anything, who thinks she's better than you because of her academic and professional credentials. No mm -hmm. man wants to deal with that shit. Nope. You know what I'm saying? So, and I'm not saying that a lot of people, especially in America. They think, oh, we want a woman that's servile or whatever as a slave. No, it's not about that. It's a woman who's not a pain in the ass to deal with, okay? Uh -huh. That's true. Okay? Is she a nice person? Is she cool to be around? Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Does she, does she know how to fall back sometimes? Let a man leave. You know what I'm saying? Break it down, yep. If you don't know how to let a man leave, if you feel like you got to control the... the, the the interaction and test the man at every fucking juncture. That's gonna be a problem. Most men don't want to deal with it. They let their boss leave yeah. at the job. Exactly. And it's not about being weak. It's not about being, you know, oh, you just want a woman you can run over. No, it's not about that. It's about I know my role as a man. The woman has her role as a woman, okay? 
I'm the man. I'm the leader. Okay? Uh-huh. In a relationship, you can't have two leaders. It doesn't work. You need a, you need a, co, you need a co-pilot. You got to have somebody who's the leader. You got to have somebody who's the, can fall back and be the supplement to supplement or whatever. Uh-huh. And unfortunately, a lot of people will see that in a negative light. Okay? They do. There's only be one leader in a relationship. You can't have two leaders. Okay? Yeah. I'm the man. I'm the leader. Hey, I'm not saying that like she's my slave or nothing like that. No. It's that I got my role as a man. She has her role as a woman. And that's it. They, don't, they ain't figured it out yet. Well, they, they've been indoctrinated. Exactly. So, you know, we're here in Brazil. We're enjoying our lives here. I'm not concerned about what happens in the United States. I'm not, I don't think about the, 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 the social, economic problems up there when I'm here. I just don't, I just don't think about it. I'm here, I'm present, living my life, being a scholar, here kicking it. Yeah. We're I talking about what's going on here with the opportunity that we see here. I don't think about that shit either, but I want to I piggyback off my mans real quick off of the whole school thing. So we can talk about school. What happened is, a lot of these girls that deleted me, unmatched me, unfollowed me, unsubscribed from me, which, by the way, let me just be clear, I'm not losing any sleep, by the way. This is just YouTube content. I'm not losing any sleep. Y'all think I'm going to go home and cry? Hell no, because I won. DJ won. We figured it out. We cracked the code. We cracked the Da Vinci code. We figured it out. Hey, earn U.S. dollars and move to another country. Stay in another country. We figured this shit out, but they never figured it out. They were like, okay, we're going to go to school, we're going to get educated, we're going to do what they tell us to do, we're going to get these degrees, and we're going to get these student loan debts, all right? So that's what they did. But what they what they realized, which is kind of too late, is that now you have people who are making a lot of money, and they don't have any degrees. Because of, because of the advent of social media, social media is a gift and a curse, the internet, the internet, is a gift and a curse, but you have a lot of people. If you have some, t- if you have uh, some type of skill, you can monetize yourself in a positive way on the internet, right? You can open a business. You can go e-commerce. You can start selling shit from China. All types of stuff. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes, amigo. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, that's. That's what they realized they failed. So now they're 39 and they're 40, DJ. 39 and 40. They don't look as good as they used to. All of the text messages they used to get from all the guys has has dwindled, okay? They still got the student loan debt because Joe Biden didn't save them. Now they realize that the student loan debt is non-bankruptable, which means they're going to be paying for it for the rest of their life. And they go on Instagram and they go on TikTok and they go on Facebook and they see... Skyler. They say, oh shit, what is this nigga doing? Oh shit, he's out here in Brazil. Oh, he's at the yacht party. Oh sh- he's out here having a parlay with the uh with these young Brazilian chicks. He's tossing them up. He's folding them up on the couch. What is he talking about? How could he? This is a this is a guy that I used that used to uh message me all the time. He didn't elevate it, he didn't evolve like a Pokemon. Never gave a shit because I You know what I'm saying? That's what happened. And um I'm going to stop it right here. He's absolutely right. And I want to interject with what he said about um, about the women. That's why they, they be on the one video, that's why they expect a the man to make $100,000 and, and all these other crazy ass incomes because they want to find a man that can so called cover that category and still maybe my money's your money once I take your name in marriage and then and then continue to live the, the lifestyle and that's why the, some of these women some who are on the internet and some who there are women out there who are not on the internet that have this mindset and this is the thing that's going to keep women single so excuse me from, from a different perspective you know why they ain't no good why they go man, man for the women who asked that I just showed you just showed you that's what they say. Why did, why your, your your friends, your sisters are single? Because their mindset. And they and, and they're past hurt. And let me go on in depth. Some women need really some mental counseling. And I would say to the men, man, 
It's good to have someone beauty, but make sure her head is right. Study her personality. Because the, once once you have the body, the longevity is the personality you got to deal with. So that that's true on that one. So I just wanted to make this video. It's about the, but yeah, that might be my advice. And man, hang in there. Remember, save your money up. If you don't find it here, there's up there's other women that went in the world with love, and they will be right on you. Be right with you. What one woman won't do, another one do. But these women that get these unreal ex expectations of feeling like a, every man got to be coming to a millionaire in order to get get with me, let the women go. There's women that get common sense enough and realistically that know that's the, that's not reality. And there's women overseas won't have to require you that way. If they're not here in America, they're somewhere overseas that would love to get with you. So, man, don't give up. That's what I have to say to other men. Don't give up. There's other women on the planet. And and then scholar is basically, that's what they're saying. So get your money right, get your health right, get your finances right, and you'll be blessed, man. Don't worry about it. If they don't want to get with you, hey, let them be back here looking, looking like Boo Boo the Fool. All right, take care, be blessed. See you on the next video. Oh, yeah, like, share, and subscribe.